Hello, I'm Salim Yusuf from McMaster University in Hamilton, Canada. I'm going to share with you the second part of the results of the uh, TIPS 3 study. The first part has already been shared with you by Professor Prem Pais from India. In the second part of TIPS, of TIPS 3, we wanted to find out uh, whether aspirin in addition to the polypill would lead to added benefits that were worthwhile and that it was safe. What we did was we took the same 5,700 people in the trial who had been randomized to polypill or placebo, and we re-randomized them to receive aspirin at 75 milligrams a day or equivalent placebo. This meant uh, that a quarter of the people got both aspirin plus a polypill, a quarter got neither, and a qu quarter only got an aspirin or only, a, only the polypill. The first part of the results are that aspirin reduced the risk of major cardiovascular disease events by about 14%. Now, this is about the same magnitude of benefit that we have seen in previous trials of aspirin in primary prevention. So although this difference was not statistically significant, when you look at the results in the context of all other primary prevention trials of aspirin, we see a consistent pattern. And this is then believable that indeed, aspirin does have a moderate but worthwhile effect. The most important thing was that there was no excess in bleeding or dyspepsia, and it may be due to the low dose of aspirin, or maybe because we had a run in phase. The most interesting part of the result is that the combination of the polypill plus aspirin reduced the risk of cardiovascular events by about 31 or 32 percent. As may have been explained to you by Professor Pius, there were major problems in getting the drugs to patients before the drugs run out, ran out. This was due to delays in production or delays in uh, shipping or due to the COVID epidemic. So we did pre-specify a prior hypothesis, a prior analysis, where we uh, excluded events that occurred 30 days after stopping uh, the medications for administrative reasons, not for side effects, but for administrative reasons. And when we did that, the benefits of the polypill was about 30% instead of 20%, and the benefits of aspirin plus the polypill was about 40%. So this would suggest in people who actually take the polypill plus aspirin, we will get quite a substantial benefit of at least 30% and likely 40%. The role of the polypill plus aspirin in primary prevention is of some considerable importance. Preventing disease in people who have never had a heart attack or stroke is very important. Um, and demonstrating benefit, as we've done in this trial, is, has big public health significance. We've conservatively estimated that if the polypill plus aspirin is used in perhaps half the people who should get it, a few million people every year, perhaps about 3 million people every year, will avoid a heart attack or stroke. That is not trivial. In fact, it's very important. Another question that always comes up is, so is the polypill uh, and the use of aspirin only for poor countries. It actually is for people in all countries, given that there are big treatment gaps, both in the wealthy countries as well as in the less wealthy countries. Uh, we have to remember that the polypill is a delivery mechanism. We already know a lot uh, about the benefits of statins and blood pressure lowering independent of uh, giving it as a single pill. So it's not no surprise that giving it as a combination makes it easier for people to take it and has an important benefit.